Hi guys, welcome back. What you just saw there was some clips of me testing the fingers of this compact bionic hand I'm working on. So I'll go through the design so far and um, discuss things as they arise. So what we're looking at here is a sub-assembly of one of the fingers. So it's an artificial tendon driven unit. In the back there you can see a little elastic rope. So that returns the finger to the extended position when there's no load on it. So if one of the joints is bent and then released, it pops back. And down the front channel of the uh, finger is a small rope, which I'm using as an artificial uh, tendon. So when that's tensioned by either pulling it or a motor, it contracts. So in this design, I've gone for SLS printing. And SLS printing is um, an advanced form of 3D printing. It, it actually uses a powder matrix and a laser to sinter together material. So a bit different from standard FDM printing, which extrudes a molten material uh, layer by layer. This still builds layer by layer, but it has some benefits. So SLS printed parts are more durable generally. They're made out of a nylon base, so they're quite tough. And because there's no support material involved in the process, uh, the quality tends to be much higher. So here I'm just comparing this finger to a previous one that I did FDM print. And you can see the quality at the interface between two parts is a lot better. And on the FDM printed part, you can clearly see the lines from the layering process. But in the SLS printed part, it is slightly rough, but the quality feels a lot better than an FDM printed part. So because powder printed parts don't require support material, it allows you to create intricate and fine details and features that still come out uh, neat and smooth. So specifically for the channels of these tendons, I could be somewhat creative and create um, intricate paths throughout the finger components and the palm component in order to tension that uh, tendon. So the finger consists of three primary components. In the biological human hand, the bones are called phalanxes. The one furthest away from the heart is called the distal phalanx, and the one closest to the heart is the proximal phalanx. So I'm using somewhat of an exoskeleton design. The uh, rigid components are exposed to the outside world in this case, but I'm still mimicking the biology um, somewhat, especially with this tendon-driven system. In the real human hand, uh, we actually have multiple tendons, uh, one going to each phalanx. But for simplicity, I'm just starting with one degree of freedom with regards to flexion. This is the elastic that's returning the finger to its extended position. And this is just that thin synthetic rope or cable that I'm using as the artificial tendon. When these parts first come out of an SLS printer, and by the way, I don't own an SLS printer myself. I'm paying for these to be printed externally. Uh, some features can still be filled with unfused powder. So because these channels down the interior of these parts are quite small, uh, it retains some of the powder. So here I'm just using a wire to clear out some of that powder. I actually later found it was better to just use a drill bit to clear out the powder. Um, and it also gave a consistent diameter through the whole channel. Inside the finger joints at the interface between the powder printed parts, I'm using some nylon washers and I'm placing them in between the uh, sliding surfaces. So I'm doing this to decrease the friction and also reduce the risk of the parts wearing down over time. So even though they're the same material, the powder printed parts come out a little bit rough and the nylon washers are a lot smoother. And I'm also using a metal pin straight through the joint just to hold everything together. So I've designed it so the metal pin is an interference fit on the outer sections, as seen here, highlighted in red. And on the inside, it's a loose clearance fit. Inserting these nylon washers into the parts first requires putting one of them in the corresponding socket in one piece inserting the other corresponding piece, and then the next one I push in the gap between them and use a tool to put it in place. 
Finally, I use a metal pin to insert into the hole and with a little bit of pressing force, push that pin through. And this gives the first actuated joint of the finger. And I repeat this process for each joint in the finger using two washers and one pin per joint. I also have a small fingertip cap piece. So in the distal phalanx part, I have two uh, cylinders which house knots in the tendon and the elastic to prevent the, um, them from slipping through their channels. So the fingertip cap part just covers them up and also finishes off the end of the finger. And I'm thinking of making this a rubber piece in the future for more grip and compliance. So I actually found it's a bit easier to insert the rope through all the channels at the end once everything's assembled. And just one last point worth mentioning was that initially I was using Igus bushings instead of the nylon, nylon washers and they have the benefit that they're flanged and are actually designed exactly for this application but they're quite expensive they're about four to five dollars each and I'm using 20 to 30 in my design so that's already more than a hundred dollars just on bushings whereas the washers I can get a pack of 50 for a couple dollars. In order to tension the artificial tendons, I'm using micro gear motors in the palm. So when the motor shaft rotates, the pulley tugs on the tendon and closes the finger. So there's actually a little bit to say about these little pulleys and I've already ran into some problems which I'll discuss. But essentially the shafts are D shafts, which just means they have a flat on one side. So I've designed the pulley to have a corresponding D hole. For the shaft to fit into and like the other parts we've seen so far the powder needs to be cleared out so i have a clear path to put the tendon rope through so here we can see the completed finger sub assembly it has the elastic running through the back channel and the artificial tendon rope running through the front channel and that tendon also passes through the pulley and I've tied a knot on the end to prevent it from slipping through. And finally, I just trim off the excess rope. You may have noticed there's a small wall protruding from the pulley and it's actually a 0.5 millimeter thick wall. So this probably wouldn't be possible to print on an FDM printer. And to be honest, it's only barely possible with an SLS powdered printer. But there actually is a purpose for this. So jumping into the CAD, we can see that the motor is in line with the purple pulley and it's also in line with a sensor. So this sensor is a rotary potentiometer, which basically has variable resistance depending on the rotational position it's at. So we can see the motor shaft is slightly undersized compared to the hole of the sensor. And it's possible for this shaft to be rotating inside this sensor without actually causing the sensor to rotate. So what I've done is I've added some wall thickness to the pulley part. So it ensures, it ensures that when the motor rotates, the sensor also rotates, as seen here. You might be wondering what the need of these sensors is in the first place. And it's a good question. In order to precisely control the position of the fingers, we need to be able to control the rotation of the motor. It's not really possible to control the motor's exact rotational position just by controlling the current through it, unless we have some form of feedback telling us exactly where we, we are in space. So these sensors provide uh, rotational sensing of the motor shaft and hence allow us to implement fine control through the software of the fingertip motion and also their final position. It also ensures that we properly keep track of the finger positioning. For example, if we hold onto an object, the software can ensure that we are indeed holding onto that object and we're not gonna let go of it unless that's the intent of the user. I was initially looking at using magnetic hall effect encoders on an output shaft of these motors to control their position. So this is all well and good, but the problem with these encoders is that they're relative sensors. So they only give a rotational position relative to the starting point. Now the problem with this is that if the system lost power or it was simply powered off, we lose track of where the fingers are in space and 
this has uh, many problems. It could be solved by storing the position in non-volatile memory, but that adds a layer of complexity to the overall software side and electronic side. So I decided it was a bit better to use the rotary potentiometers in this case. Unfortunately, I couldn't find ones with holes quite small enough to perfectly match the 3mm motor shafts, however. One more piece I've yet to mention is what would correspond to the knuckle piece. So this piece has two semicircular grooves in it, and it's designed that way to slot into the palm piece. I've done this because it simplifies assembly. It means I can assemble the complete finger in one go, including putting the tendons through. And I actually secure the elastic tendon in the knuckle piece because there's no reason for it to pass into the palm. And the driving tendon, the small rope, that goes into the pulley, which goes onto the motor along with the sensor. So that whole subassembly, I can then line up and push into their corresponding slots. Later on, I will use some additional plates on the back of the palm, as well as a custom PCB with the electronics to further secure everything in place. I've also just soldered on some power leads to the terminals of the motor, just for some quick testing. But in the future, these wires will be much smaller and will solder directly to the custom PCB on the back. To me, having the knuckle piece slide into position was a nice solution to make it easier to assemble. There is a bit of unwanted play in there, but that's just because the powder printer was a bit more accurate than I anticipated, so the tolerancing was a bit loose, but that's an easy fix in the future. So the only thing left to do was test it out. In this position, the motor is still on, so it's actually stalling, which isn't good practice. You should always limit the maximum amount of current through the motor, but that is the finger in the fully closed or fully flexed position, and it did actually feel quite strong in that position. It was difficult for me to open it up with my fingers. I actually couldn't. Even when I powered off the motor, there was still some retaining force from the stiction and friction in the motor. And when I did try force the finger open to rotate the motor in the opposite direction, it damaged the pulley. So I'll just show you that here. Because the surrounding material around the already small hole going through the pulley is quite minimal, when there was a large torque being applied by the motor, the knot was pulling on that surrounding material with a significant amount of force. And after a certain point, the material was just sheared, the knot pulled straight through the material. So it's a bit of a design error by me. I haven't designed these pulleys to withstand enough torque that they may be subject to. And I'm planning on fixing that in the very near future. One final design point to discuss is just the positioning of all four motors driving the index, middle, ring and pinky finger. So two of them for the index and pinky position are positioned exactly how I've demonstrated in this video. And the other two are positioned slightly just below them. And in that case, the tendons obviously can't run straight through the other motors. So the tendons run through slots on the front of the palm. And I will have some covers covering everything up uh, to make it neat and more secure in the future. So stay tuned for that. I would also like to mention that this design isn't really going for a significant gripping force. I think the gripping force will be quite adequate, but the overall um, aim is to make a compact binding can whilst fitting as many degrees of freedom in there to make it dexterous. Uh, but really the additional degrees of freedom are applicable to the thumb and the wrist, which I plan to talk about in my next video. And following that, I will discuss the software um, and electronic side. So if you like this, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions and a like always helps the video. And I just wanted to give a very special thank you to Umar Shirov, who became the first Patreon supporter of this page. I do invest quite a bit of my time and money into these projects. But I do have a dream of attaching this to an amputee and making a useful product for them in the future. So if you would like to consider supporting the channel, please visit the Patreon page. And thanks so much for watching.